Hey folks, this is Chad Perkins for Red Giant, here to introduce you to Trap Code Form. You know, Form is a unique particle system, and it's unique because particle systems generally keep spitting out particles, like a fountain. But Form particles never die. So let's go ahead and apply Trap Code Form. I'm going to select the uh, Form layer here, just a solid, and I'm going to go to the Effect menu, go to the RG Trap Code submenu, and choose Form. Now, the default settings of form, admittedly, are not going to be bringing the proverbial boys to the yard, so to speak. They're not amazing. And I'm going to show you how to make them amazing. Don't even worry about it. Let's just go ahead and start in the designer. I'm going to click the designer button here in the effect controls panel. That launches the designer, which is a really interesting tool. And whether you are new to form or whether you're an experienced user, I recommend starting here because it's a great visual way to play with form. It basically takes all of these settings here in the effect controls panel. It's just kind of a bunch of text and there's just so many options here. It kind of gets a little uh, confusing sometimes because there's so much going on. And it takes and breaks these into a bunch of visual blocks that you can play with and tweak to get the same results that you could hear. The designer is also a great preset browser. So as we open up the presets, we have all these amazing categories. So if we open up basics, for example, we have all these cool presets. We can click to apply one and they auto animate as we can see here. And this is just a beautiful shape. I'm going to show you how to make something very similar in just a moment. And we have all of these different plasma things and whatnot, a bunch of cool objects. I'm going to close up basics. I'm going to go into lines and we have a bunch of other options here. Very cool things. Slashes. You can see how diverse this plugin is. I'm going to go ahead and click on streaklet twist. Now what happens when you apply a, a preset is that it populates all of these blocks with the properties of that preset. So you can tweak them to your heart's content. So I can go in and click on twist here. And then once I click on twist, I get the options for twist. So now it's a value of two, but I can take that down to maybe like negative three. And not only do I get options, but there's other blocks that I can use to control what's going on. I'm gonna click on the color block here. And I have options for the colors, which we'll tweak in just a moment. But if I go all the way up to blocks, I see these other options for color. It's almost like these are presets for this particular block. So I'm going to click on Desert Shadow. And then I move my cursor back over here. And then I get the options for this Desert Shadow color preset. And I'm going to make it a little bit more vibrant. I'm going to take these desaturated colors out and just drag down on them. And I'll click on this one, maybe make it a little bit more vibrant and just kind of move those around and we have a completely different look than what we started with now some of these blocks are off right now it says fractal field off maybe i want it on so i can click on that block and maybe i'll take x displace up to something higher than zero so now we have a little bit more kinetic energy going on in our streaklets here and it's starting to kind of auto animate a little bit. Another thing that I can do here is click on the camera icon and we'll see this little uh, cursor here changes. And that means that this is fully 3D. I can click and drag and move this around in 3D space. It's because Form is a 3D particle plugin, which is really cool. I'm gonna go ahead and leave it there. I'll go ahead and click apply to apply it. And now it changes our form into this cool shape. I can go ahead and create a camera and adjust this with the After Effects camera, move this around like so, which is awesome. And then I also have the same settings here in the effect controls panel for form that we saw in the designer. So maybe that displacement was a little hardcore so I could open up fractal field. There's the displace value. And maybe I could take this down to say something like 50. Maybe let's go up to the base form and adjust the uh, X size, take it down a little bit. This kind of plays around with the shape. Maybe add a little bit of text here. And there we go. We have our final piece. I mean, geez, it's pretty quick and easy, right? And you know, a lot of users will just use the designer and like, that's it. I mean, you could use the designer, use the presets to start and then tweak them with the other blocks. And maybe that's as far as you get with form and that's fine. 
But for those of you that want to take things a little bit further, and I recommend that you follow through the rest of the tutorial, I'd like to go and show you a little bit and start from scratch, show you how Form really thinks and operates. So you can, even if you're just going to use the designer presets, which is again, totally fine, you'll understand what to do to tweak them to get the results that you're looking for. So I'm going to go to another composition where I have Form applied already. And I'm going to go ahead and create a new camera so we can see what's going on. Again, this is just a form applied with its default settings. I haven't changed anything so we can see what's going on here. And I'm going to use the camera tool. I'm going to rotate around so we can see what's going on. You see, form has three basic components to it. Again, this is a little bit of, of a simplification, but there is the base form. In other words, the structure that the particles follow. And then there's also the particles themselves. And there's also all the deformations and adjustments and transformations that you could make to those particles. So the three components of form. So right now, the base form, the structure, is a grid. That's the default settings. It's set up to be a grid. So we have particles going along this way, particles, little dots going down this way. And actually I'll zoom in so you can see a little bit more closely here. So you can see all the particles in X, all the particles in Y, and then in Z, we only have three particles. And that's where our grid's coming from. So if I took this up to say five, then we'd have five particles along the Z axis. We could adjust the size of the base form, and that shrinks things uniformly or grows things uniformly. Now, what I'm going to do here is actually just uh, delete my camera for now. I just want to show you that so you can keep that in mind. That's how that works. And I'm going to take the particles in Z down to just one, just so we have one flat 2D grid of particles. So it's a little bit easier to see what we're doing here. Now we could adjust the shape of the base form. We could use grid strings, which we'll uh, look at a little bit more later. We could make a sphere and we could also use an OBJ model, which we'll also look at momentarily uh, in just a bit. I'm going to keep this set on grid for right now though. And I'm going to adjust the particles. I'm going to adjust the particles in X to make this a little bit more dense. And if I keep going, it's going to look like we have almost like these strings. I don't want to get that far, but I want to increase the particles in Y kind of want this dense, dense grid here. And I want to talk about one of the best ways to adjust form, one of the most common uh, distortions of form. We're going to skip over talking about particles for a second. The particles section is where we control the actual dots themselves. So if we want to increase the size of them or decrease the opacity or what have you, um, that's where you can do that. But I'm going to close up particle for the moment and I'm going to open up fractal field. You see, there is this kind of fractal noise map that Form uses to do a bunch of distorting and adjusting behind the scenes. And in order to kind of visualize what that looks like, I'm going to increase effect opacity. And as I do that, you can kind of see a little bit more clearly what's going on here. So it's using this fractal noise map behind the scenes and where the map is white, the particles remain completely opaque. Where the, where the map is dark, the particles begin to disappear the more that we use this map to affect the opacity. Now the magic of form is not necessarily here, but in using this map to displace the particles. So as I increase displace, you could see that where there was white, the particles are moving forward, and where there was black in that map, the particles are moving back. And if we take this up to more ridiculous values, those particles start to overlap one another. And by default, I'm just going to close up fractal field here, open up particle. By default, the blend mode of the particles is add. So this isn't referring to the layer or even the effect. This is just the particles will add it to themselves as they overlap, which creates these beautiful little highlights, these little fractal lightning bolts you see going around our form. To make this even more beautiful, I'm going to change the color here from this white swatch. Click on the swatch to like a cyanish color. And hey, that's kind of that's kind of gorgeous. Open up base form again and maybe make this a little bit more dense. Let's bring up more particles in X and a lot more particles in Y. This brightens it, but it also makes it kind of more like this gorgeous digital cloth. Now, it definitely slows things down a little bit, but it's worth it in my opinion. I can adjust the position of the base form, 
And what's kind of cool is that this is different than the position of the fractal noise map used to create these distortions, this displacement. So when I move along the X position or the X axis, for example, I move this base form, it kind of wraps around those distortions. It's pretty elegant. We could maybe go into size of our particles and bump those up to two. We see that now they are thicker particles and that gives us a brighter result. And maybe we want to randomize the size. So we increase size random a little bit and now it just selectively randomizes the size of those particles. We'll take that down for the moment. We also take down the opacity and increase the opacity random. Pretty cool stuff. I'm going to close up the particles section for right now. And I want to talk about disperse and twist. These are also some distortions and transformations you could apply very quickly and easily to your form. I'm going to increase disperse, which disperses those particles. And you can see we get pretty crazy with that and just shoot those out into space. It's a great way to create a star field if you wanted to create some stars. You could also twist the base form around. Maybe if I take this to a little bit higher of a number, we can see that a little bit more clearly. Yeah, it's starting to wrap around like a little, you know, peppermint candy. I'll take that back down to zero here. Now let's look at a few more quick examples. I want to show you some cool tricks for using form for user interface elements. I love this. So again, I've already applied form for you, but it's just at the default settings. I'm going to change the base form from box grid to box strings. And what that does is that it just makes strings instead of a row of X particles. And then we can mess with these strings and get kind of a different result. Now, by default, the uh, again, the X, Y, Z are linked together. And I don't want them to be linked together. I want to be able to adjust them separately. So I'm going to change X, Y, Z linked to XYZ individual where it says size. XYZ individual. And now what I can do, I'm gonna take strings to one. So again, we only have this, this 2D section here. And I'm going to increase the size X so it goes off the screen. Make sure that that goes beyond the edges of our comp there. Yep, that works. And then I'll decrease the size Y a little bit. And then I'm going to decrease the strings and Y. It's a little bit too dense for my liking. I want something less. So now we get these kind of cool bands. There we go. I want to look a little like a music staff. There we go. And maybe seven or so. So I have these cool horizontal lines. And I can adjust the density of those lines. If I take this down, we'll start to see those lines kind of break up a little bit. And then we could increase the size random, which randomizes the sizes per string, which gives us this kind of cool texture here. Now I might want to go into size, maybe bump these up a little bit. I know this doesn't look like anything, just hang with me for a second. I'm going to adjust size random so that these are kind of a random size. And that's also just a really cool texture right there. That could be a user interface element by itself. But we're going to add one of the great buddies of user face elements. We're going to add polar coordinates to this. And I'm going to change polar direct to rect to polar, increase interpolation to wrap that around. And now I have this really cool disk orb of, uh, of cool random, random lights here. I can also change the particle type. Actually, let me change the color first. I'm going to change the color from white to like a UI blue. There we go. And I can change the particle type from regular sphere to glow sphere, which adds a little bit of glow to those edges. Or we could change this to any one of another number of things. We could change this to star. We could also use one of the sprite or textured polygon options to use another layer as the particle. Square might also be a good option for this, but for now I'm just going to leave this set to glow sphere. I think I might add a little bit of opacity random to mix this up a little bit. And I could go back to my density, maybe add a little bit more density here. Oh, now that's getting kind of cool. I like that. And maybe take down size random a little bit. You could also play with the, uh, the size settings here to get some really interesting results. And maybe I'll increase the, just the Y settings. And now we have like, this really cool kind of ring here. And again, just playing with any of these settings gives us a completely different result. Changing the particle gives us completely different results. So a lot to play with here, folks. Let me show you another example here. I'm going to use another instance of form, and I'm going to keep this set to box grid. I'm going to take the size 
to XYZ individual. Again, I'm gonna take particles in Z down to just one. And I'm gonna reduce the size in Y, similar to what we just did actually, increase the size X, so this takes up the screen. And I'm gonna increase the particles in X. And maybe actually decrease that a little bit. I want bigger particles. So I'm gonna open up the particles section, adjust size here. And I also wanna change the particle type to square. So in the particle section, particle type, I'm gonna change this to square. And uh, I'm gonna fiddle with the number of particles. See, like we have this really dense vertical lines because we have too, too many particles for what I want. I wanna make a grid here. So I'm gonna decrease that. Ah, see, now we're getting somewhere. See, that's kinda cool. Uh, and then a little bit more. There we go. Okay. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna pick a cool red color here in the particle section. Click on the white color swatch. Let's give it a nice vibrant red. And then we could give it some opacity random. And here we have, again, a very cool little UI element. Alternatively, you can go down to the fractal field, have it affect opacity. And one of the cool things about, and maybe even affect size a little bit, one of the cool things about uh, the fractal field is that it's auto animating. So by having the fractal field affect size and opacity, or opacity, or displacement, it automatically animates. So if I play this back, you could see that they, we have some randomization here in our squares. Now, one final awesome example here. I have form again, haven't changed anything. And I wanna change the base form from box grid to OBJ model. That's gonna allow me to use a 3D model for my form. Now, when you click OBJ model, this choose OBJ button which is super handy, uh, becomes selectable. So I click that and you actually see that we have a library of OBJ files that come with form and we have this handy dandy browser. It's almost like a little mini designer built in here for the uh, OBJ choosing. And so we have a bunch of geometric shapes here. And as we scroll down, we have like you know, these sunglasses and guns and a bunch of really cool things. For right now, I'm just gonna go ahead and hit cancel though. And I'm going to go down to the OBJ settings here and this drop down, the 3D model drop down, will allow me to choose my own 3D object. I've actually imported uh, an OBJ sequence, which has a horse galloping. And so I'm going to rotate this 90 degrees. And I'm also going to change the particles from edges to faces. Now we get this action, you know, with this cool horse and stuff. Maybe I might want to randomize the particles, randomize the opacity, kind of make it feel like a little hologram a little bit. And now we have a 3D particle system in the shape of a horse. And not only just the shape of a horse, but in the shape of a galloping horse, because this is an OBJ sequence. This is awesome. So folks, that's basically it. As you continue to play with form, you're gonna see all of the wonderful capacities it has. It's such a great creative tool. One thing I invite you to explore is the ability to play with audio uh, and form. Form will allow you to drive the adjustments of form by audio properties. What I'm about to show you here has zero keyframes and zero expressions. All of the animation is being controlled by audio. Some pretty cool stuff here, folks. Now, if you're interested in this, you can check it out in the audio react section of the UI. So again, thank you so much for watching this tutorial. Happy forming, enjoy your playing. Again, on behalf of Red Giant, I'm Chad Perkins. Thanks for watching, take care.